The um the acquittal of Donald Trump in the second impeachment trial speaks volumes about the moral fiber of the Republican senators <clears throat> who refused to abandon him. Even more, it shows how the former squatter, despite his pol political tox toxicity, still has a stranglehold on the um on the Republican Party. This should be an electoral bonanza for Democrats in the months and years to come. And make no mistake, Trump is toxic. He lost re-election decisively by more than seven million votes overall and by a big margin in the electoral college. In early January, he was he was a pivotal factor in the two Georgia runoff election losses that caused Republicans to Senate. And don't forget that Trump was also the reason that Republicans lost control of the House back in 2018. You don't need to be a professional pollster to understand that Republicans are in trouble among the suburban swing voters who simply hate Trump. Poll after poll shows this, and while the GOP may continue to run up the score in crimson red states, Democrats will be increasingly competitive in other states with educated purplish areas like Arizona, Michigan, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and now Georgia. Um, for its own pres um, for its own preservation, the GOP has every reason to um, to figure to figuratively lock Trump in a suitcase and throw him overboard. They had many chances and never took them. In January, they were handed what might have been the widest and easiest off ramp um, of the modern political era that they could have parted ways with a former commander in chief or squatter for inciting a bloody invasion of the capital that sought to overthrow American democracy. They balked, they balked, and instead they set a terrible precedent for the country, effectively dealing all future lame duck um, squatters our president to get out of a, to get a, to, um, to get a, get out of jail card, get out of jail card for any illegal or unconstitutional actions taken in the final weeks of their presidency or squadency, mm -hmm. but not every Republican is beholden to Trump. The 57 to 43 impeachment vote had seven, had seven Republicans supporting the conviction. A testament to the highly fractured nature of the GOP and the party is caught between a more traditional wing that had enough of the 45th squatter and others who fear the repercussions of breaking with the party's rapid pro-Trump rank and file. If Trump stays in play and remains the boogeyman who, um, who the most Democrats see as an ex existential threat to democracy and country, he will keep, he will keep the Democrats united, easing the potentially destructive tensions between the party's progressive and centrist wings. And if things couldn't get any worse, the House, um, the House, the House Republican caucuses, caucuses failure to remove Marjorie Taylor Greene, fucking dumb skank, the rabid conspiracy theorist from Georgia from key committee assignments, has already provided a bounty of content for Democratic and and Democratic ad maker, makers targeting targeting vulnerable House Republicans in swing districts. All of this paints a less than rosy political and electoral picture for the GOP as they head into the twenty twenty two midterms, and as and as they look ahead to twenty twenty four. Their failure to their failure to amputate Trumpism will bring about more painful bloodletting for Republicans at the federal and state level in the years to come, and the waning signs are all flashing bright red. As Gallup has recently recorded, nationwide approval ratings for the GOP are down, with the largest drops among Republicans themselves, which explains the parade of Republicans leaving the party. Those same political ad makers will have ample fodder for targeting vulnerable Republican senators as well. Of the 34 senators that are up for re-election in 2022, 17 are Republicans. Another three Senate races in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina will be open seats currently held by retiring Republicans. Three of the 17 Republicans are facing re-election, and they won their and they won their last race by 10% back in 2016, just as Trump was coming in the coming into squats in the White House. This puts at least six GOP-controlled Senate seats in in play for 2022. Of course, there may be two or three Democratic seats at risk of being flipped, but it's the G but it's the GOP with a target on its back. <clears throat> For Republicans trying to win over a heavily suburban, educated electorate, um, Trump, the twice impeached squatter with record low approval ratings as he left office, will drag on the races like an anvil. And typically, a minority party tries to regain power by telling Americans how it is and how it would govern better. But whatever criticisms the GLP stalwarts will lob at the Biden administration over the coming years may be drowned out by the un um, unremitting um, cacophony of news about the former squatter um, about the former squatter's legal woes and new revelations about mismanagement and incompetence during his tenure. But voters will be constantly reminded how bad things were when the GOP was in power. Um, this week, the political arm of the of the House um, of the House Republicans released a list of 47 so-called vulnerable House seats that were held by Democrats that are aiming to to call back in 2022. But how does a party that demonstrated demonstrably failed to vote for impeachment in the House and failed to convict Trump not once, but twice in the Senate, and 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 one that must operate in the shadow of a of a leader that's saddled by a laundry list of legal woes expects 
that will play in the purple um tinge swing sw swingy suburbs that are the focus of many of these targeted house dates and that well we predict. Bam. 